Look at that fancy Christmas tree. <laughs> Woo! Mike Golick Jr. coming up big. Coming up big on this. You know the time. It's Rankings Reaction. It's the Rankings Reaction show. Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, and we have guest stars galore. My boy Trevor Scales. You usually see us on Saturdays. Uh, hanging out uh, for yeah, the uh, college man. football it's good show. Good to be here you again. You get to come back. Yeah, yeah. return. And, and we're gonna Friend have another show? surprise guest that comes sits yeah. right we'll in this little. We'll leave it nice. We hope. Open. We're keeping it. No, we're keeping yeah, it. We're keeping you know, the seat like, warm for star power. Yeah, no, we're. Uh, he's definitely gonna come, right? Yeah, I got a text <laughs> earlier. I got a text earlier. That's oh, you right. got a text, so that means it's gonna happen. It's yeah. automatic. And speaking of happening, uh, those shoes are fantastic. I know we got a lot of college football rankings to get to. You guys can ha uh, hashtag rankings reaction, but those shoes. Fire. I'd, I make sure that I bring a certain level of heat to try and get a special <laughs> someone to notice no. at some point in this process, but uh, we will see. The Prestos me, you are, want me to notice. I want you to notice okay. my Prestos, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I do want you to notice my socks because they're specifically for you. Oh, look at I that. I got Backstreet Boy socks going on this week. Backstreet's back. You do it every Friday on First and Last. You got Backstreet, like Backstreet Boy Friday, right? Yes. So I, I'm in honor of you. I brought the Backstreet Boys. I appreciate off. that. I, they they say Backstreet's back. I'm really confused when they ever left. Like, didn't they ever stop? They did. Right. Uh, hey, shout out to them though. Like oh. they're having a, a resurgence of pop radio. I'm really proud of the guys for that. Yeah, man, that's good uh, stuff. Trevor, do you have anything to add to? I this like again? the Backstreet Boys. Like I'm a bit. I was an NSYNC guy coming up. To be completely honest with yeah, you, in that whole war of pop culture. But yeah, and it was a war of pop culture. Straight up. <laughs> we are, we're uh, only minutes away from being uh, joined by radio. We're going to be simulcasting this week as we've done nice. in the past. So we're going to have a huge audience coming from radio and coming from Twitter. It's going to be a fabulous time. You guys can get in on the conversation. Hashtag rankings reaction. Obviously, if you haven't seen the big news, uh, you know, Alabama's number one, right? That was the big news. <laughs> we were all waiting That's on pins and needles <laughs> to see if the Tide would maintain their number one spot. My bad, my bad. I'm sorry. The big news is obviously... Clemson's number two, right? I'm, this is called a draw. You're just gonna. I'm, just, <laughs> gonna I'm gonna stretching this, the huh? dough on this. No, we're not. We're not. Okay, fine. Just we get to it. it. Come just on. The top dough. 25. Uh, the, it's been revealed. Alabama at one. Clemson two. Notre Dame for uh, you know Mike's sake at three. Four is Georgia. How about them dogs, surprised. Fitz? Wow. How about them dogs? Yeah, I should note that Trevor Scales, while he played for Harvard, <laughs> uh, is a, is a dog through and through. Uh, but the big statement from everybody is at five and six. Oklahoma. At five, Ohio State at six. I'm here to say the committee got it right. I think this was a statement, though, guys. The committee had to show us how they feel about a team that has the biggest blowout loss, but also the most significant win of the year for college football. That's what Ohio State has done. Big win late in the season. Ohio State knows this blueprint, man. They've lived this life before. Shades of 2014. We're going to beat that comparison into the ground tonight. But it's important and it's worthwhile. And if Ohio State goes out and thumps Northwestern the way they thumped Wisconsin in 2014, I guess sneaking suspicion, that team's going to be in the playoff. What? And and I'll tell you, you think Ohio State's going to leapfrog Oklahoma by beating a Northwestern team that fell in the rankings? If they beat the absolute mess out of Northwestern, because what, Texas, who, who uh, Oklahoma's getting ready to play, is two spots above that Northwestern team right now. They are two spots above, or t sorry, that's Texas A&M. Yeah, Never Texas, mind. Is, <laughs> Texas is a 14. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> at least, at least that, that we seems just wrong and like it supports my point way too well. <laughs> but Gojo, like, don't you think there's something to the fact that Oklahoma gets a chance to literally redeem the one loss that they have on their schedule in the season? There is something to that, but the book on Oklahoma is out. They score a ton of points and they give up a ton of points. And I have a feeling all those coaches that sit in on that committee are a little sick and tired of watching nobody play defense. And they saw Ohio State do enough on defense to go, maybe they'll be our one. Do enough? I mean, <laughs> we're, we're not talking about Ohio State's defense like it's suddenly like throwing out the dogs. I mean, the Ohio State defense is okay, but it, it's not that much better. They always the have dudes. Like, that's yes. the one thing about Buck, the Buckeye. They always recruit really well, and there's always going to be pro-level prospects at every single level of that defense. I'm not saying that they performed up until this point. You know, we, you and I have had this discussion many a times, but they came to play on Saturday, and they always have the, they have the ability to show up like that every I, single Saturday. I keep hearing people say that, like, the Ohio State's defensive line is stacked with talent. Talent that struggled to beat Maryland. Talent that hasn't looked particularly good more often than not. This, uh, congratulations, Ohio State. You got tons of talent on a team that played mediocre football. Jason, what happens every year in the NFL draft? Straight up. With quarterbacks. We look at guys that are super talented, <laughs> yep. and we say, you know what? 
I think I can work with that guy. I see a ceiling there that I don't see. There's a reason Deshaun Watson was not the first quarterback taken because eventually, if you're on too much and people get too much of you, they got time to nitpick all the flaws. And we've had time to nitpick all of Oklahoma's flaws. Ohio State gave us something different. They gave us something that we all wanted and expected. And now I have a feeling this committee wants to reward them for it. Cam on Twitter, just remember, hashtag rankings reaction. You can get in this conversation. Cam on Twitter just pointed out, OSU, Gave up 51 points to Maryland. Let's relax a little bit on this, like, like great defense conversation about Ohio State. That's all I'm saying. Oh, oh, and we get Trevor Scales, top five person of all time. Let's wow. go. Of all time. Hey. I can't help what, you the, like I can't help the comes out of? Every you didn't wear any Backstreet Boys socks. Paying pay your uncle. I got socks on. They're not bad. Yeah, they're, they're not bad at all. Backs? Don't you? Yeah, they're not bad. Don't, don't, they're like, they're don't, not, don't slander them. Backstreet's back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to be joined by radio here in just a second, and we're going to be doing this uh, as we hang out on radio and on Twitter through the duration of this. By the way, no comment shed on my fire Christmas sweater? I mean, we knew you were fishing for it. That's the problem, oh. is you wanted it too much. Fishing for it? I earned it. I earned it. This is fabulous stuff. Welcome in radio. <laughs> Spain and Fitz, it's the hashtag rankings reaction show Coming in, we're going to do this for the next hour on Spade and Fitz. Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, Trevor Scales, Hello. one of our special guests. We got two. We got one more coming. I'm not saying Trevor isn't a, a, an amazing special guest, but we got somebody bigger coming too. So, uh, listen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we had someone <laughs> bigger. If he, listen, if he comes, this is someone bigger than all of us. Yes. Right? Yeah, like, the reason we all he's not that. here is because he's coming from the sports center set. I mean, he's better than us. <laughs> that, that is, you don't he lives in a much don't, nicer neighborhood don't than get I do. Away. Like, there's a reason he wouldn't return your calls about doing the show at his house and I was like please come come take my living Wait, room. did you try and do it did we try and move locations that I would mean, have been, I'm but sure I love I wasn't you, the first choice you, you're talking about this like we're sitting in some slum here like we're in Mike Golick Jr's living room for everybody on radio hanging out and this is actually people ask me all the time is this actually Golick Jr's living room like yes yes it is that his his Christmas tree. Did you decorate that yourself? Buddy? I did. I put that up today so that my mom wouldn't yell at me when she watched this Twitter feed oh because boy. if I hadn't decorated, I would have gotten in a lot of trouble and pretty much everything I've ever done in this house has been motivated out of fear of a woman. Your mom is a saint. Happy birthday to her, by the way. <laughs> oh, happy uh, birthday. It's rankings reaction. Oh, we're a couple days belated, but or a day belated. But day still belated. Still yeah. uh, Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, Trevor Scales, another special guest coming. Getting you caught up on what has happened. The committee has spoken and they've spoken in a big, big way. Uh, Matt Schick, who hosts Game Day Radio on ESPN Radio on the weekend, said earlier he thought this would be the most important penultimate uh, or most statement-oriented penultimate rankings we've ever seen. They made their statement. Number one, Alabama. Number two, Clemson. Number three, Notre Dame. Number four, Georgia. That is what many of us expected. After that, we got our statement. Number five, Oklahoma. Number six, Ohio State. Number seven is Michigan. So Michigan gets thumped by Ohio State. For that, they fall just a few spots. Few spots. UCF gets their way up one to number eight. Florida at nine, and LSU, who apparently can lose to everybody in the country and still be in the top ten, sitting at number ten. Mike, your immediate reactions to that? People in Orlando got to be mighty upset with this one. And now it's a balance because for this one, we obviously understand Mackenzie Milton, the horrific injury. We uh, first and foremost that it was. Brutal to watch for a guy that's been an unreal college football player in an unreal program. But we knew for this week, the rankings are supposed to reflect what you've done so far. And UCF still went out and won that game pretty handily. Now, going into this next weekend, as we adjust for the final rankings on Sunday, that could fall even more based on what happens on Sunday. And also the fact, like, that's not a walkover game against Memphis. And the committee is supposed to take into account injuries when they happen and what this team looks like without their star quarterback. Let me be a beacon of light, Trevor Scales. You ready for this? Go ahead. What you got, buddy? They got a full game against Memphis to show that, hey, they are such a juggernaut offensively right. that they can still do it. And a few weeks ago, the guys, a lot of the college football guys, Brad Edwards, I think, was the, at the forefront of it. We're tweeting out this chaotic scenario of if all of these things happen, UCF could get into uh, the top four. Some of those scenarios still exist. I mean, if Northwestern can win yeah. and if Texas can win, all of a sudden UCF's going to be sitting there, especially if Alabama goes out and just thumps Georgia. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. If that no, happens, listen, real. UCF does at least have this one game with the backup quarterback and against Memphis, who they struggled to beat earlier, exactly. to make a statement. Yeah, th this is the, the textbook area where UCF can prove that they have things outside of their starting quarterback. 
that can help them uh, help move them up in the rankings. They are equipped to do so. They have like a myriad of 500 yard rush rushers on that roster that allow them the, the capability offensively to keep up with just about anybody. So if UCF can make a statement, beat Memphis handily this uh, in the conference championship this weekend, we'll see what they can do. But it does take a lot of help in front of them. We're supposed to take into account the you know the conference championship. That's one thing. If all resumes are considered are, are somewhat equal, yep. the committee is supposed to look at conference championships. How much the AAC conference championship is worth to the committee is going to be interesting because we already got a statement. Every time someone has lost a meaningful game, it has not been enough for UCF to jump them. It took LSU getting three losses for that to finally happen. Michigan is still above them. LSU was above them before. And now Georgia at number four above them. We're really supposed to believe if Georgia loses to Alabama, even if they get beat like LSU, that that's going to be enough for the committee to jump UCF over them? No. They've shown us time and time again, if it comes down to it and Alabama thumps Georgia and UCF wins, they're still going to put Georgia in. Yeah. And you're listening to Spain and Fitz. This is the Rankings Reaction show you can see it on twitter hashtag rankings reaction we are here to get your reactions you can join in the conversation mike Ola jr jason fitz trevor scales we got another big guest coming to join us are you here to say that if alabama beats georgia in your mind it's a good game alabama beats georgia we get the rest of this chaos for for the sake of this uh texas beats oklahoma and northwestern beats ohio state okay Uh, in that process you're here to say a two loss georgia team would go in in your mind over an undefeated UCF team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, so there's no on, chance. Based there's on, no chance. Based on what we've been told, yes. And, I mean, hell, based on this, we'd have to look at the fact where they think about putting a two-loss Michigan team That's what I was just already saying. Like, yeah, there's, there's already another two-loss team. Them too. No. How much is a win, to me- a win against Memphis worth to the committee at this point? That's what you got to ask yourself because right now they told you what they've done so far, not enough to be above a two-loss team. But let's remember, Michigan now has the one thing on your resume you can't bounce back from. We can continue to use this narrative week in and week out because we see it again. Yet again, we are seeing a situation where, uh, Trevor, a terrible loss. Right. The, the, this is what the commitment committee told us. The terrible loss is not outweighed by an incredible win. No, not at all. Like, that, that is the most detrimental factor to your schedule. If you have a terrible loss, if you get whooped up on, that's what's going to drop you off more than anything. And I think UCF has, like, some slight semblance of hope with the fact that sitting in that eight slot, right, if they were to go out and absolutely wax Memphis, there is a chance they could leapfrog a Michigan team that's sitting at home. They could then leapfrog a Michigan, uh, an Ohio State team that loses to Northwestern. And then there's a possibility if Texas knocks off uh, Oklahoma that they move up again. It, they just have to have the best performance humanly possible for a team combined with the fact that everything else poorly happens in front of them. You guys are commenting all over the place. Hashtag rankings reaction. We love it. Giving up over 60 points and falling three spots is only logical, right? I mean, this, this is the piece of it, though. Like, uh, you know, Bobby Carpenter said on Golik and Wingo last week, you're going to take whatever piece of statistic helps what you want your, your case, case to be, yep. and you're going to go with that. Uh, realistically, it, it, does, one 60 po- does one massive loss to Ohio State outweigh the rest of Michigan season? No, it doesn't. Michigan's still one of the better teams in the country, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so what they've showed you is they're one of the teams that the committee still thinks is better than UCF. Like when you talk about what the group of five is up against in this uphill battle, you have had your best champion, a team that's won 23 or 24 games straight now, and it's still not been good enough. And I think it's also too, they're taking into account that rivalry factor that we talked about yeah. on the, the Saturday show, right? Like it's, it's a matter of understanding that Ohio State was more up for this game than they have ever been this season. It was very apparent that that was the case. Combined with the fact that, you know, just weird things happen, they they in, they tend to kind of give you a little slack when it comes to how far you're going to slip in a rivalry game, i.e. with Michigan. Well, and, and go ahead, Mike. No, I was just going to say, I think that rivalry factor, human committee is going to probably take that into account more so. That'll apply certainly for Notre Dame and uh, Southern Cal. Obviously, Notre Dame undefeated doesn't matter, but when you look at the way people assess those kind of wins and losses right. in those games, that's why it'll be interesting, too, the Big 12 championship. That's a rivalry game no in doubt. the Big 12 title. No doubt. Some of you guys on Twitter, uh, I've just seen it again where they come in and say, hey, UCF, schedule somebody. If you watch the show, you know that I've been hard on UCF. But let's be honest, it's not as simple as schedule somebody. I will continue to die on this hill. If UCF is calling Wisconsin or Penn State or Texas right now saying, hey, you want to play a home and home? It's like, same phone, who this? Same phone, not even a new one. It's same phone, who this? You flippantly glossed over Notre Dame. When we come back on the radio side, there's some hate going at Notre Dame. We'll get Mike Gullick Jr.'s thoughts on it. Spain and Fitz giving you the hashtag rankings reaction show out on Twitter. We'll be back on radio. We're going to keep going on Twitter.
So as you guys continue to chime in on Twitter, uh, uh, there's already the comment, expand to an eight-team playoff. Why no. don't we do that? We, no. we don't get this. Stop it. We don't get this. Stop it. Like, are we all going to be fired up I over? like my checks, first of all. Like, <laughs> let's keep these going <laughs> in general. So, like, oh, yeah, I, I need yeah. that to go as well. <laughs> and that's amazing. Mike, are you in on eight? I've been, I have been four-team playoff guy for the longest now. I like try, I like to speak your language and go the guy route. <laughs> Jake, for anyone that doesn't understand the usual construct, Jason Fitz just labels something so and so guy. So you are Twitter guy right now. You're live stream guy commenting yeah. on our stream at this point. I'm, and I'm I am Chris, four-team I'm Christmas playoff. sweater guy. You are definitely Christmas sweater you guy. Are yeah, hardcore. you're condescending co-host guy. So you're <laughs> all yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Hashtag rankings reaction. Uh, and, and, you know, here's the thing. I will say this. Before this year particularly, I was squarely 18. I've been 18 huh. playoff guy for a long time. So what changed it? I, I think going in and seeing, going and doing the mock committee in Dallas. Ding, 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 Put ding, it on the board. Which we did this year. Uh, going in and experiencing that, number one. But then just having a conversation with as many college football people around that remind me that one of the best things about college football is this conversation. I mean, it's the argument that makes it interesting. And, and uh, you know, as much as you might be able to keep the ninth, 10th team engaged, their fan base engaged, and as much as we might want to see UCF and what it would look like, I, I, I don't understand why expansion is really necessary when, frankly, ratings are better than ever, conversation is higher than ever. I mean, there's not a reason, in a dollars and cents business, Somebody explain to me why we really need it. Yeah. I think the only reason you would want an A-team playoff is if you really want to reassert the value of a conference championship. Right. Because if you go to the A-team playoff, then you get five automatic, you know, you get five of the, the automatic bids, qualifiers yep. if you win a conference championship, and then three at large bids. So it's what the committee and what college football really wants to make of that. I love this comment that came in. Logged on to see the Pac-12 get screwed in the at CFB playoff rankings. Again, hashtag rankings, reactions. We take all opinions and comments here, even the ones that aren't very good, like that one. I mean, right. come on. What, I, what, like, I don't know what you want us to do for the Pac-12. Like, come on, Pac-12 guy. What do you got to say yeah, now? I, 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 I say Pac-12 guy is drowning, unfortunately. <laughs> like that Pac-12 guy didn't have much of a leg to stand on at this point. Like, your best hope got nuked this weekend. Washington <laughs> State goes out there and lost in a rivalry game, and I get it. It is a rivalry game, but you were a conference without much to stand on. Like, that's just that's just who you've been this year. And, and before anybody cries for anybody, let's remember that there is at least a realistic scenario. I'm going to say there's a realistic scenario where, Trevor, your dogs beat Bama. Sure. And all of a sudden, we end up with Alabama, Notre Dame, Clemson, and Georgia, which I've been saying on this show since the first one, hey, we could have three teams essentially. You know, you got two from the SEC. Exactly. And then you got Notre Dame telling the rest of the Power Five, hey, Y'all don't matter, tighten and that, that, that's the truth at this point. Well, it's, it's not even that they don't matter. You, you just need to tighten up, right? Like, there, there are just metrics that show that those conferences have been down. Right? We're looking at the Big Ten. We're having this argument with uh, Ohio State and Michigan, right? Like, that with Ohio State inserting themselves into the college football playoff position. But we understand how poorly they have looked at times. Giving up 300 yards to one dude off a of Maryland Terrapin roster, I don't understand how we're still sort of giving you the benefit of the doubt. There's something to be said there that you are just not coming to play on a week-to-week -week basis and that's what frustrates me about this Buckeyes team what their ceiling is is cool but what they have shown to, to actually put out on a week-to-week -week basis is not great you are throwing a fiery level of come on with there. it you can get at him <laughs> at Trevor scales at Jason Fitz at M Golick JR 57 uh, and we've got at the Mike Foss hanging out over there, just, oh. just sitting there. You're just, you're just sitting there. You've been there. quiet. Yeah. <laughs> you, know what? you know what? Mike Foss, though, Mike's, Mike Foss, Foss, Foss came in large. Chocolate? Last week, Foss told us that uh, his, he and his family routinely kick 65-yard field goals. We didn't believe it. And then next thing you know, I'm getting tagged in videos oh, yeah. that are making me like, like every time the Raiders try like a 40 yard kick, I'm puckered up. Your family yeah. is doing that for like before the cranberry just, sauce. Just smoking them. No Absolutely. pucker yeah. for the Foss. No pucker. Thank you so much. No so pucker. no pucker Raiders. Thanksgiving. By the, the way, yeah. well, both producers wearing flannel right now. Oh wow. Very like the, the outfits are, are eerily similar. He's Finish also going. got no you cards there. I should bring cards. <laughs> It's Spain and Fitz giving you the rankings reaction. If you're listening on radio, Mike Golick Jr., Trevor Scales, Jason Fitz, we're going to get you caught up on everything that the committee has told us and break down what it really means. You can also follow along at Twitter uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can find it out there uh, on the ESPN or the ESPN College Football handle. You can get in 
to the conversation using hashtag rankings reaction. It's an easy way to be in there. We're getting into your comments. There's a bunch of you guys chiming in. If you're just tuning in, the big news, obviously, Bama 1, Clemson 2, Notre Dame 3. We expected that. Georgia 4, Oklahoma 5, Ohio State 6. Also of note, Texas at 14 and Northwestern at 21. So that tells you Oklahoma has a better opponent left than Ohio State. That's going to be significant as we look at championship weekend. Now, Mike, it's time to throw a little shade at you because championship weekend isn't something you seem to give a darn about one way or the other <laughs> because you're just sitting back saying, nah, Notre Dame's made our case. We're done. Should a team that doesn't even play the extra game, doesn't even put it on the line, be part of the college football playoff conversation? It's a good sell. You sound like collective Twitter. That was Thank a good you. job of channeling all much. their energy. <laughs> it, the Stugats is strong. Kick my feet up, man. What do I got to worry about? This is great. You know what? They talk about all this stuff about how, why, you know, why should Notre Dame be allowed to do this? I don't know why, and it isn't mine to reason why. I just go <laughs> off what the committee has told us, and what the committee has told Notre Dame since this started, which is if you are in a season where Notre Dame's strength of schedule is high like it usually is, you can be a one-loss team in it. Notre Dame, before they got thumped by Miami the other year, was a one-loss team ranked number three in the country at that point in the college football playoff poll. And this year, they have been number three for the last number of weeks, undefeated because their strength of schedule is somewhere down around 36 instead of near the top 10 like it usually is. So as long as they keep telling Notre Dame that, why would we change a damn thing? Well, I'm going to make two points here. Number one, Trevor, you and I sit in the conference room every Saturday before the college football show, which you can watch on Twitter from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, same venue here, come back on Saturday. Yeah. You might have sat there and we've watched Notre Dame every week. They look like one of the four best teams in the country. I yeah, mean, it's, it's, it's hard to argue that they don't belong in that conversation, right? Like they're a team that has gone out and dominated on a week to week basis. They've, they've been able to put together really good performances against some pretty solid teams. I understand that people call that strength of schedule into, uh, in, in, into question quite a bit, but the fact of going undefeated is nothing easy. And, and to do so, it should be rewarded. Well, let me, let me, let me say something smart for once, not something Please, very often. fire it off. If you're not going to have a conference championship game, then some years you don't get the benefit. And that's what conference championships bring you. They bring you the benefit of another big game. Some years they're going to need that benefit. Oh, this year, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, there we in. go. Big Come time. on in for the real thing. If you're listening on radio, Spain and Fitz. Good to see you. Spain and Fitz, it's the rankings we have on the show. We just got so much oh, stop. and cooler as Kevin Nagandi comes in and joins us. And now the show is going to get really, Big really now, smart. Baby. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, I'm here to disappoint you. <laughs> okay, you know, we are, uh, first of all, on radio, uh, if you're listening, Spain and Fitz, uh, rankings, reaction, Michael Luke Jr., Trevor Scales, Kevin Gandhi, Jason Fitz. We're breaking down everything that the committee has told us. On Twitter, you can get in on, on the conversation. Uh, it's hashtag rankings, reaction. Did you tweet that you were coming on? No, I did not because oh. I wanted to make sure I was here first and yeah, then I'll tweet. I mean, that, that's so, I, so how about I tweet it like Twitter now, show. Right? No, I mean, like, go ahead. You, like, if you'd like to pull out your phone and go and do this. Uh, let's do it. I'm just immediately badgering our guest who came over here after a first day at 6 o'clock sports center. <laughs> he works on for no. one hour and but, he's too busy. That's you know, what you're telling. So I, I am interested, though, there Kevin, we go. Kevin's perspective in all this. And I'll, I'll filibuster to give him time to tweet because he's being bullied by Jason Fitz I re I retweeted you. Hey, retweet. I'm going to pick up some followers. Oh, no. stop. They're a bunch of Eagles fans, so I apologize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy that. But, Kevin, you were, I say, you were yeah. on air. I saw you talking to, to Reese before everything went on and, yeah. and getting the, the temperature of the room before and then as we were getting the rankings coming out. So what did you make of the news as it was breaking and some of the conversations you had tonight? I, it, it, it's not a surprise, but to me, I come back to one specific thing. Um, how can Ohio State – if they dominate Northwestern and Oklahoma beats Texas and Oklahoma can just say, we beat everybody on our schedule. Granted, we lost to Texas, but we beat everybody. And Texas is ranked 14th. How can, can Ohio State jump it? How, how can the committee on Sunday say, wait a second, we're going to have one team jump over another team? Uh, that, that's where I'm stuck on. Like, to me, to me the, the most important thing tonight from the committee was, where were these two teams going to be? Now, the next discussion is going to be, of course, you know, if Georgia and Alabama, how they play out, if, if Georgia loses on a you know, late field goal, can you justify Georgia going in with two losses over Oklahoma and Ohio State if they went out? That's another thing the committee is going to tackle. Uh, listen, it, it, it all depends on what we see. One versus four in a rematch. Would we want to see that, the, the, you know, four Three weeks later, later yeah. right? Right. 
I, I don't know. I, I, it depends on how the game actually plays out, appetite-wise. But I will say one thing. Yeah, Oklahoma's defense is brutal. The one thing that, that the Sooners have, potentially, they will be able to score. So I've played scenarios out. This was hypothetical if Michigan beat Ohio State. Would you have preferred in that 1-4 game, Alabama beating Oklahoma 60-40 to or Alabama beating Michigan 27-10? to I want 60 to 40. 60 to 40, <laughs> right, versus the top two Heisman guys. Right. So are we right. at that point where we're right. looking at, hey, I, I want to be entertained. I want to see now how Nick Saban's going to handle a mobile quarterback. Th those discussions yeah. come in uh, when they when they look at kind of the, uh, it's a beauty contest, right? right. And, right. And well, there's an aesthetic value. Too. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And, and I, in my mind, the only team that's going to have any chance to beat Alabama is a team that can put up a Ton, ton of points. Of points. There is one team in the in this conversation that can put up a ton of points. It's Oklahoma. And there is. I think there's something to be said for balance because we saw for in the favor of you talk about the Michigan aesthetic that reminded me a lot of LSU to where LSU great defense, yeah. really average to below average offense, and when you've got that kind of inequality, you get exposed. I don't know if that would count the same with Oklahoma because I'm with you. It may not be what gives us the best game, but even subconsciously, I'm sure the committee is looking at this like the rest of us are and going, man, what beats Alabama at yeah, this right. point? Right. Like, because exactly. it's about picking the four best. Right. And so yep. how else do you judge the best besides who's going to beat the best? So what well, we did uh, earlier today when we were getting ready for the interviews and what we were doing for the show, one of the things I wanted to look up was, listen, last year's matchup between Georgia and Oklahoma Think about that. The Rose Bowl, it was one of the great yep. games Fantastic. of the season, right? Yeah. And we wanted more of it. And you had a dynamic quarterback versus the SEC. The difference is Oklahoma's defense a year ago was in the 60s. When you look at efficiency, scoring, yards allowed. And I was trying to kind of fit that narrative to this year's Oklahoma team. It's really it, hard. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. But I mean, a 40-team, the 50-team drop-off. They're in the hundreds yeah. in every other category. So, uh, it's Spain and Fitz. Uh, on radio, you're listening to the Rankings Reaction Show, which you can see on Twitter. Kevin Nagandi, Trevor Scales, Mike Oluk Jr., I'm Jason Fitz. What do you do? It's a little bit of a microcosm with Oklahoma of the same thing that we've talked about Ohio State's year. Yeah. For Ohio State, they have the worst loss and the best win. For Oklahoma, they have the worst unit defensively. They have the best unit offensively. Yes. So, you, you have to find some balance on on what you care about. But ultimately, the eye test has to matter to me. And, totally. and the thing that I'll look at, and it's not just because offense looks prettier than defense, guys. I, I think there's a, a spot here where Ohio State came out week in and week out and just fell flat, and they just didn't look great. And that has to matter. You know, we saw a couple of comments rolling by when I made the comment about not knowing what Ohio State you would get on a week-to-week -week basis. And the comment was then, well, you didn't know whether or not Oklahoma was going to get beat. The, the difference there is we knew that there was excellent out offensive output from yeah. Oklahoma every single week. What their defense did, they might have let up for 40 or 50 points on a week-to-week -week basis, but you knew that was the game going in. And so knowing that there was a level of consistency Oklahoma's uh, from Oklahoma's offense was always going to be there is what kind of gives me gives them the benefit of the doubt in my mind and what probably swayed the committee and that they do one thing excellently and there's another side of the ball that they are just going to forgive in a sense. Now let's play this scenario out too while we're talking about this. Ohio State in the last month barely, barely beat Nebraska. Nebraska should have won that game. Yes. They made a few mistakes and, Absolutely. and basically you're sitting there and you're like, what are you doing in the red zone? They hung a they hung the entire time with Maryland on the road, but we're talking about Maryland. Maryland yeah. And no offense, but th that that unit has gone through so much, and that unit was playing with a backup quarterback, yeah. right? right? Right. And if that quarterback makes that throw, we're not having this discussion. Not at all. They're right? out of there. Yes. They lose to Purdue on the road. So when you look at this win against Michigan, what are we looking at? We are looking at them dominating a rivalry game. Yep. At home. At home. Right. Not doing anything. I, this is this is the weirdest one-loss team in a long time. Where you feel bad that yeah. they were like you look back and you're like, wait, they, they only have one loss. But you forget they've been through so much in the last month where they didn't look like they deserved to be to in the, be in the conversation. Yep. Stick with us if you're listening on radio. We're gonna be on Twitter. We'll be right back. We're gonna get thoughts on Mike's hairline and everything that Nagandi oh, has to say about this. Also, awesome. oh, I know why? throwing why? all sorts of shade. <laughs> Stick why? with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> So on Twitter, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, what well, did you no, have? So this is what I'd say. So we just had the, the discussion about all of Ohio State's close losses. Yeah. Oklahoma, 
if you know, Mike Gundy going for a two point conversion yep. at the end of that game Fair versus point. Oklahoma State, they gave up 40 points to Kansas. They gave up 46 points to a Texas Tech team that went on the road against Kansas State and put up six. You're they right. They put up six <laughs> points in that game. You throw that up there with that loss to Army that almost happened on yep. a station. I had oh, to go dig up on the internet. <laughs> Should have happened. <laughs> like, right? So this, this has been a team that has been wildly imperfect as well in a lot of the same ways. And Ohio State, I'm not going to act like Ohio State's offense in remarkably consistent. Dwayne Haskins has been one of the best quarterbacks yes. in college football no all year long. That's a group that can score in bunches, certainly. Now, I think they're top 10 in offensive efficiency. Oklahoma's number one, obviously. Right. So they're, guys, very, they're a little more similar than I think we give them credit for outside of the potential for Ohio State's defense. So uh, if you're watching on Twitter, hashtag rankings reaction is how you get in the conversation. You guys are doing that in, in phenomenal numbers. We're trying to keep up with all the comments coming through. We will get to some of them, but we, we do have some confidence meter stuff to get here, Mike. Uh, I believe we are doing your, your confidence in Notre Dame. Mike's confidence yeah. in Notre Dame. <laughs> Still got 100. It. You went from 9,000 last week just back to 100. Yeah, what they wanted to have like a nice clean baseline for this one. I think okay. we, you know, may have used some hair that shouldn't have been mine. So You are 100% confident that Notre Dame is headed to the playoffs. Oh, yeah. No, feeling okay. great. And I think, you know, what the, the playoff predictor from ESPN has us at 99% at this point. So okay. the yeah. highest percentage of getting there, we're good. Uh, we're do good. we have my confidence meter in, in, Notre, in, in Notre Dame? Because... My confidence meter doesn't look near as good, but, but you know, uh, I, I think sometimes like, you're talking about that. My confidence meter? My confidence meter, no, no, no. It's, no, hey. no, no, oh, oh, no, no, oh, there it is. Bam. Oh, oh, no. It's zero hey. because no. the conversation isn't about, no, it isn't about oh. making the playoff anymore. It's about how do they look if they have to play Alabama. Ain't going to be pretty. I feel like your meter's flipping us off, too, right it now. Is. Right? It so is. It is absolutely. even suggesting right. that Notre Dame has a chance. I have to say it's very suggestive. Yeah, like, <laughs> would a man <laughs> with a gorilla Christmas sweater. <laughs> and can we note, by the way, my, gorillas, my gorilla is, like, hanging on to two, like, sweet kittens. Little kittens. Sweet ki- little kittens. So, like, yeah, he's wearing a little. Sweet that stuff. is a bold statement, man. Thank you so much. You, you are comfortable in who you I'm are. A, oh, sorry. i got to move my laptop so the world can see. Move the laptop so we can see your gorilla sweater. I'm just going to. Look at that. Mike. I, I'm sorry that you know we're, we're talking in the ears. I think oh oh yeah, it's fuzzy too. You're very fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, I wasn't sure what he was gonna do, and I, I thought that was uh, I thought that was gonna uh, happen. Um, this is the cut. This is the time I'm sure Kevin Agandhi is sitting here going, I sped off the sports center <laughs> set for this. A scarf down dinner. And, yeah. No, you guys are great, man. And by the way, the, the last time I was here, this production has has amped up. Hey, now. Just like, a little bit. How many yeah. cameras we got here? Like, we're glowing up right now like, put up my seriously. christmas tree for you guys you know the funny thing is we start this because we're like hey we can do it small it doesn't take anything and, and then and we're like look at this so much easier than tv and before you know it it's basically tv basically it's TV. just happening you know with a whole bunch of people you uh, got a camera that's moving by itself over there <laughs> yeah. oh, no that's always here for mike. my mike mike just keeps that here in case it's a wild friday night <laughs> yeah believe me the autonomy of that camera is terrifying to me as someone <laughs> <laughs> who is decidedly anti-robot, it constantly moving is really unnerving. And yeah, when it does that when I'm asleep on the couch, is even weirder. No, that is that yeah. is. So amazing. I want to play one scenario out, too. Okay, yes, right, yes. We, we've been talking about Oklahoma and Ohio State and how they play. Now, let's, let's not forget this. Oklahoma's defense gets crushed. Yeah. But if Oklahoma would have won that game against West Virginia by 20 less points, would we have given more credibility to that win when West Virginia is a top-10 team? Probably. In Morgantown. So they have a road top 10 team yeah. win. Right? Yeah. And no one talks about that. Now, no. now, granted, defense didn't show up and there were no safeties. West Virginia also 35th and 36th in defensive efficiency. Like, they're not right, a like bad this, defense. That's, that's, that's they surprising go to Morgantown and they win that game. Right? So I think a lot of people forget that. Granted, they gave up 700 yards and good yeah. lord. They, <laughs> they set defense back. But... If you're looking at one metric and everybody's measuring the Ohio State win over Michigan, Ohio State won that game at home. Correct. Right? Yep. And they played Big Ten football with a little Big 12 feel with the way they – because Haskins has been amazing all season long. Incredible. But let's not forget Ohio State on the road gave up Big 12 numbers defensively in that game against Maryland. And I think, too, right, it's, it's just a matter of looking at Ohio State and wondering which one, wh- which game is more characteristic yeah. of them holistically. Is it that Purdue game or is it the Michigan game? Which, which way are you sliding that scale as to what team you expect to show up 
come the end of December, beginning of January, should they get a chance in this college football yep. playoff. And you brought that up. Well, yeah. The one thing we can get, count on each week is right. Oklahoma's offense. Correct. Right. And their defense being putrid. That's yeah. something you can always count on. That's just a fact of the matter. Mike, who would your top four have been? My top four have been? Yeah. Did they get it right? Oh, yeah. They, they got the top four right. Did they and get the top six right in your mind this yes, week? That, that's yes. the way I would have ordered it. I was worried no, they were going to put Ohio State above them right there. Right? Yeah, I was worried they were going to put Ohio State above them this week. I thought there was a real chance of that. Yeah. Just and, and, and Kevin, you can speak this. I mean, this felt like 2014 to right. me. Right. Yes. Where Ohio State loses by two touchdowns to Virginia Tech, and it's long enough ago where we're like, you know what? Maybe they're different now. Yes. They're like your ex that you're willing to welcome back in with open arms, <laughs> knowing they might hurt you. Yeah. And, and then the scenario too, like last year, hypothetically, we we're already talking that if Alabama beats Georgia or Georgia beats Alabama, could we see still, despite losing, yep. you're still going to make the playoff right. in the top four, right? Right. right. Well, because we've seen they're not going to knock you a ton for that. Like, look at where LSU didn't drop to and when they lost to Alabama. Two yes. Look where Michigan just didn't drop to yes. after getting thumped by Ohio State. Like, there's a low bar to clear here. And I, I think, I, I, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to say, like, I, I think what was indicative and what kind of clued me into, into the fact that Ohio State was likely going to be behind Oklahoma was the fact that UCF jumped them last week, despite Ohio State having won, right? Like, that showed that the committee had already looked at Ohio State as it, through this lens of saying, we don't know what is going to show up from them. And, and for the fact of the matter that the Knights are going to give us a certain level of productivity on a week to week basis. We're going to bring radio back in. Okay. Spain and Fitz, you're listening to Spain and Fitz. We're doing the rankings reaction show. Uh, we're live in Mike Golick Jr.'s house. It's Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, Trevor Scales, Kevin Nagandi as we break down everything. And uh, we were just talking about this during the break. I want to bring the radio, uh, the radio people up to date on this too because there's an interesting conversation here. We all agree that they got the top six correct. Yeah. I think also there has to be a little credit to the committee because in my mind, the easier thing to do would have been to put Ohio State at five, and I'll tell you why. Oklahoma has a better opponent left on the record. So they could have easily put Ohio State at five and justify the flip next week, and nobody would have questioned it. Oklahoma goes in, beats Northwestern. It's a better oppo opponent. Uh, sorry, Oklahoma goes in and beats Texas, which is a better opponent yeah. than Northwestern. So they could have put Ohio State at five, made it really easy to put Oklahoma at six, and then next week just flip-flop them based on the results. They made a statement with the results. So if you're a conspiracy theorist and you believe that the committee has their own agenda, what they did today is actually anti-agenda in my mind. No, yeah, they, they did what they say they do on paper in that they took a one-week look at where these teams are and assessed appropriately that this team is better than this team and this team is better than this team. Like It was a very clear assessment on this given week where these teams are and not necessarily what the ceiling for this team is versus the ceiling for that team. You guys can chime in. Hashtag rankings reactions on Twitter. Maybe the best comment ever. My fiance walked by while I was watching this and she said, that room needs a woman's touch. And now <laughs> she's obsessed with trying to decorate that room around the Notre Dame gear. Mike, if she decorated around the Notre Dame gear and left the picture of your, your dad up, would, they, would that be allowed? She can burn that. She can decorate whatever she wants. I have been petitioning for like the guy version of cuffing season where I'll pay for dinner in exchange for someone just helping me decorate this place. There you go. I sent, a, I sent a picture of this place out. I was proud of it before. I'm putting up on social media. I'm flexing on everybody. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I get a reply from one of my female friends who goes, I am really disappointed in the lack of a theme in here. And I'm like, all right, listen, I'm single trying to make this work, all right? I'm trying to make ends meet in this household, make it look nice so my mom won't yell at me when she sees this broadcast. And I'm getting it from all angles right now. I'm sweaty. If you're just tuning in, let me get you re reset so on what's happened. The committee has given us the top four most of us expected. Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, Georgia in that order. The big statement was number five, Oklahoma, number six, Ohio State. Also of note, Texas at number 14. Uh, Northwestern at number 21. So it tells you sort of what we're going to see this weekend as we sort of as we get a, a significant statement from the committee about how they value a team that has possibly the worst loss of the conversation, but also possibly by far the best win of the conversation. Uh, we're being asked if you can watch this on your TV. Uh, no, this is just on Twitter. So you got to have like fancy, you know, uh, Apple TV stuff to Fire, do that. Stick it up. Yeah, whatever so you, you, get got, it, you like, find, yeah, find your way. My core, I don't know. Find so, somebody in their 20s <laughs> to do all that. So I, one thing that I think will be interesting over the course of this, this weekend, guys, is now you have an Ohio State team and an Oklahoma team that are playing not just to win their conference championship. They're playing to get as many style points as possible. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, I expect two teams to come out with the intent of laying as many points and as much 
fanciness on the field as possible. But the unique thing is that one team plays at noon, and the idea that the other team has the concept that, hey, all right, so no, Oklahoma did to, this. Yep. We may have to put up 60 against Northwestern. Mm. And, and Oklahoma play. I mean, Ohio State plays at 8 o'clock. Yeah. So I find that fascinating, that they have the rest of the day to get ready for a game like this. I, I, here's the thing, though. If, if Oklahoma beats Texas by, let's just say it's a rivalry game, yep. by like five, let's just say One three, yeah. three points, six points, ten points, right? And Ohio State wins by 30. How are we judging it? I, I leave it the exact same, frankly. Like, I, I don't see why that would be. I, I would, but I just remember that 55-point <laughs> beatdown that yes. Ohio State gave but Wisconsin, Wisconsin, the Big Wisconsin, Ten Championship yep. game. And, it changed and all of a sudden, TCU's sitting there like, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I just, I, I, I feel like that could happen again. Maybe the conference championship. That's what I was getting ready to say. Yeah, yep. Oklahoma, the, the Big Twelve addressed that conference championship issue totally. there. I, it just, it, it, it stuck in my craw, <laughs> and I feel like they're going to do it to us. No, again. yeah, and I, I think the Big Twelve it has an advantage for not sitting at the crib chilling on this weekend. Certainly. Yeah. Well, El Spring on Twitter came in and mentioned that we should talk about how flat Oklahoma looked against Army. If you're just tuning in. We've been doing that throughout yes, the course of the show. No doubt. Also, we're getting a ton of comments on Twitter in general that speak to bias, which is my the funniest thing to me. When you want to come in and say there's an SEC bias or there's a you know an anti UCF oh, bias or <laughs> all of these conversations about bias, because oh, it's much easier for a fan to look at it and say, oh my God, they don't think my team is the best. It's instead of saying that you say, you know what? They're just biased let's, against. Let's us. just get this out of the way. We are biased against all of your teams. everybody. Now that we've got that out of the way, where, where, where all did, of. Like, did, did you? Have, where'd you? You're a, 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 a temple guy, right? That's what I thought. Temple yeah, guy. Yeah, temple guy. Uh, and, and a Philly guy. A so, Philly guy. And and I catch a lot of heat from people in the American Conference, like fans in the American Conference. All, all How can you not be rooting for UCF and all? And I'm like. Listen, it's not that I'm not rooting for UCF, but I also understand what they're looking at. And to me, the way the committee, it's not even what we say. It's the way the committee viewed it in the middle of the season when they had Mackenzie Milton. Yep. Yep. And they still had UCF behind a two-loss Florida yep. team. Yep. And from there on out, I was like, they're not going to get in. They're, no matter what. And now when you lose Milton, the reason why they were in the top ten is because of Milton. And you lose him. You're in trouble. So uh, on the screen, you now see Mike's bias, power <laughs> rankings. Uh, Mike and I reveal things we have bias for and against Say. every week. Mike, explain yourself. <laughs> that, bro. Yeah, no, yeah. So that's uh, <laughs> so let me explain. So obviously the bias is against Michigan. They are who I thought they were, and they got exposed in that Ohio State game. I have gone to bat with a lot of those people. Bias in favor, obviously, Oklahoma. I think they're where they should be, consistency through the season. Bias in favor of coaches from the ESPN incubator going back to college. Yeah. Shout out to Herm Edwards. Forks up. A great year for him. And the Sun Devils, Mac Brown, hoping to duplicate that in North Carolina and gets to wear some sick Jordan gear along the way. So, <laughs> And then, of course, bias against people that think you got to wait till after Thanksgiving to decorate for Christmas. You don't. Don't let this, you know, sort wait, of. Wait, so then when did you start decorating? I mean, now I'm lazy, so I decorated today. Oh, that's, that's oh, a knee yeah. problem. So is this literally the day after Halloween? Is that when you're starting to get in? Oh, that's uh, listen. I had the so Christmas tunes in. bumping then. Like I have been listening to Ooh, Sia's Christmas album. You're, you do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Christmas music was. I'm not quite there, but I'm oh. not against it, right? Okay, like okay. I, I, I'm not quite there, yeah, but this is myself a little bit. <laughs> it, it, you're listening to Spain and Fitz giving you the rankings <laughs> reaction show. Mike Golick Jr., Trevor Scales, Jason Fitz. And I'm now very offended sitting next to the superstar Kevin Nagandi <laughs> as he gives me a, a look of, Yo. of, of <laughs> absolute disgust in my, my Christmas. Just, Do you think a man that wears this sweater <laughs> waits until yeah. after yeah. Thanksgiving? <laughs> There's <laughs> zero <laughs> chance. <Fair point. laughs> zero <laughs> chance. Yeah, well, I, by the way, yeah, when you want to bring the kittens out, of course, you yeah, got to show but, everybody. So when do, you, when do you break out the Christmas stuff? So my, my wife is, uh, has held back, and she's done a really good job because in, in the past, her family actually decorates as early as possible. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. To me, it's like, it's a mental thing. It's like, all right, one holiday, then I get ready for the next holiday. Why, why are we cramming this stuff? I still don't understand why we do Black Friday in the second week of November. It's like, wait, wait, is a Black Friday sale now? Thanksgiving, let's wait till Thanksgiving. Okay, but let me ask you this. Do you wait until the NFL season is done to consume the NBA? 
Achach! Achach! You know, you can make you can make that statement. I do. You can make that statement for college basketball, some will say, right? Yeah. Until after the yeah. NFL, yeah. right? I went to the New Year. Then February yeah. comes around, you're like, oh, who's Holy around? Right. Where's rivalry week? That's Let me get set up for the tournament. Exactly. That's why I watch the Maui the Invitational every year, and then I take a nice hiatus. Yes. The NBA, I'll check out what's it's, happening on some Twitter. Some of us can't handle multiple things. You know, like, you, you just know, totally destroyed the NBA starts on Christmas. We were on the first take of Halloween. Christmas arguments. Yeah, yeah. I'm Will Kane. I just got beat. I'm walking out the door. I hang my head. Uh, that's what happened. It's, yeah. it's, uh, hashtag, <laughs> hashtag rankings reaction. I don't know if we have time on the radio side. Do we get my bias rankings? Can we get those or you know Come on, we'll we work on them? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, we yeah, got my bias rankings. Okay. Yeah, I'm always biased against UCF because they gave themselves a national okay. championship they didn't earn. So you know what? Uh, just be happy with what you got. Uh, what? What? You're wow. looking at all this. Well, I'm, let you, I'm gonna let okay. you go. I'm biased uh, for Georgia because okay. I want to see them win. Because, like, frankly, I love the chaos and I love everybody being so upset. I'm biased against Ohio State because you haven't looked good all year. So congratulations. One Saturday you brought it. Slow clap it. I'm not that impressed. And I'm really biased for Vandy because, A, nobody can hate the doors. B, my boy's in a bowl. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Going bowling. No Same, good. dude. Sure. You celebrate oh, yeah. that win against Tennessee, yeah. right? Well, you know what? Rolling. <laughs> hey, look, Derek Mason doing <laughs> such a good job that they're like, Coach Derek Mason, Mason might be leaving. Like, that's like what I'm saying. Like, Coach, yeah, Coach Mason doing good. such a good, 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 good. I hope he doesn't go anywhere. No, I'm proud he's, he's, proud he's guy. enjoying his time in there. Temple going bowling this year. Oh, heck yeah, man. Don't get me started. Coach Listen, Collins, I, they won eight games this year. When I was there for four years, they won a total of seven. So I'm celebrating the idea that it's an eight win season. Love hey, it. listen, that, se- that senior class has been to half of Temple's bowl games in the history of the football program. Junior they have high, been to man. eight bowl like, They have been to eight bowl games. Clearly, somebody has called a Temple game this season. <laughs> maybe oh, four, maybe four in the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's I'm that dude. Oh, my God. That's incredible. Oh. Uh, Trevor, you do have a bias because you're a Dogs fan and yeah. you played for Harvard. So you have a really smart bias, right? Yeah, something like that. I guess you can call it smart. But I, I mean, I, I like to think I'm an objective. Like, I am cynical towards objective? the Objective? Yeah. I sit next to you and watch the games Listen, on Saturday. Okay, objective? I'm cynical, if anything. Like, I'm, I'm an absolute cynic. I, I will absolutely admit that. But I'm not going to sit here and boost the dogs for no apparent reason. Come I, on now. I have said this a million times. If I could only hear what Trevor Scale says during a Georgia <laughs> game, I would be convinced that they haven't won all year and that the wheels are falling <laughs> off the entire program. Fan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, it, we're uh, we're like going to keep the conversation going <laughs> on uh, on Twitter. Obviously, uh, we'll be back in just a minute to give you our thoughts on this coming weekend on radio. Hang out with us on Twitter. It's the Rankings Reaction Show on Spain and Fitz. Again, Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, Trevor Scales, Kevin Nagandi sitting in Mike's, uh, Mike's fabulous living room. Uh, there's some strong tennis shoe game from all three of you, but oh, I, I got my Backstreet Boy socks, so I feel yeah, good about well, that. Kev- Kevin Nagandi comes correct when it comes to the oh, footwear. Yeah, yeah, I did an ultra boost, so I just slid in here all <laughs> casual. <laughs> so Listen, good. I used to be, uh, I'm still, I love Jays. Yeah. I have a huge collection of them, but. Somebody got me in the boost a few years ago, Let's and uh, it, it's the most comfortable now you're sponsored sneaker. Sponsored by ever. Adidas, it's crazy. Oh, it's, 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 <laughs> three stripe life. So we are. Let's go. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, if you're just tuning in on Twitter, our top six, the, the one through four, is exactly what we expected. It's Georgia, Clemson, or sorry, Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, Georgia at five, Oklahoma at six, Ohio State. That's the big statement. UCF comes in at number eight, uh, but we we can't get through one of these without my favorite segment of every single week. It's time to figure out, Mike, who is dropping out of the playoff conversation, or as we like to call it, receding from the playoffs. So you'll see this That's fancy so Nagandi, this is going to be no, this straight, is look at that. Receding That's disrespect from the playoffs. Oh, don't do Rece- that. Like, and the eyeballs, the eyeballs looking at it. Yeah, yeah no, no. Yeah, receding from the playoff game, picture. Though, is impressive. That's, that is it's a, nice. And the is. fact that I'm fat as all hell in that picture. <laughs> angry, angry, too. Like, yeah. that was about, angry. That was about 310 pounds of chubbins right there. So, uh, <laughs> so receding from the playoff picture. By the way, if you'd have taken some of that beard hair, just like, Glued it up there. They got a, they got <laughs> a surgery. I just I would like them to go in like you know how you go into the barber shop and you point to the picture on the wall what haircut you want. If I'm going in there and asking for what hair I want them to put on top, <laughs> give me the Gandhi. Heaven the Gandhi. My God. I, I feathered <laughs> and flawless. I really want to yeah. go into a barber with the picture of you and be like, hey, give can you give golic. me this? I want the Golic. 
and what? just see how can it you, Can you give me the bad fairway? <laughs> give a guy the clippers in a dark room and then feed him whiskey for about 45 minutes and okay, then see so, what he comes so, out with. So how long are you going to hold on then? Is it, When you say the fairway, like yeah. help me understand. Is no, this, yeah. Uh, I, you know what it is? I, I, I don't know why at this point. Basically, it's that I am just too lazy to finally go ahead and do the whole thing. But Monty Jones has been calling me out for years saying, really? come on home. Come on, Dude, you, yeah, would look, come on home. you would look mean, though. Like, yeah, you'd have to work, like, you would look mean, Ball. Yeah. I already look Earth. like I have, I have full, I have tattoos all over my body. Yeah. When I walk down the street in the summer, people go across to the other side of the road. Like, I already have that. You walk into a grocery store and they'll just give you money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm you sorry, stand go ahead. I was, I was, in a, I was in a grocery store, uh, I was at a grocery store parking lot down in Nashville, and I walked by, and this little kid looked at me, and I, I waved. And the, the mom looked at the kid and was like, don't look at the mean man with the tattoos. <laughs> and I'm like, that's excellent. Little does she know that's, you're wearing your yeah. I'm like, that's right, like, the mean man with the tattoos. Right, right. <laughs> little does she know Jason's more likely to come up, I want a hug. <laughs> yeah. Like, does, that's your son, does your son need a hug? Oh. <laughs> oh, I had to be a real boy. Uh, hashtag rankings reaction to get oh. in on the conversation. Let us know uh, why we hate your team in case we haven't already told you since you guys uh, seem <laughs> to think me, that we, we hate all of them. We're about to bring radio uh, back into it, and uh, I think we're going to do uh, some, some action that involves wearing, wearing hats. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, Tim Foyle. Like, that's in Tim honor Foyle, of Thanksgiving. fan questions, conspiracy theories. It's all there. Oh, wow. I am scared to figure out what this is going to be. Oh, no. No, I think you're you good. We're back on radio. Spain and Fitz giving you the rankings reaction uh, we got Michael Luke Jr., Jason Fitz, Trevor Scales, and superstar Kevin DeGandhi. You get, you get, you get superstar status. No, wow, I don't even know why I'm wearing a tin hat. <laughs> what am I saying with the tin hats? Uh, if you're just tuning in, we are getting you caught up on everything the committee told us. Most significantly, number five, Oklahoma, number six, Ohio State. We've seen where the committee ranks these two teams. It's going to take a lot, as we've been discussing all hour, to get back and figure out any way that this changes. There's obviously a lot to play for uh, coming in, but right now, uh, as we look at this, Mike, we're wearing we're wearing tinfoil hats. Yeah, we're, we're it's gonna... a lot right now. We're uh, <laughs> we're gonna fully lean into this conspiracy theory type oh, consp- deal. Yeah, I yeah, think. okay. You know, okay. We're, we've been in the kitchen cooking these up. This is Foss's version of producing, which I'm uniquely proud of. I'm gonna give you. I'm it's gonna warm. Give you, uh... Like I can see how this keeps leftovers in the right <laughs> spot. It's warm. My God, it, it's it's straight on the dome for you, as we've been discussing during the receding uh, yeah. conversation. But let me, let me start with uh, conspiracy theory. I'll give you guys both sides of it. Conspiracy theory A is that the college football playoff committee would rather have Ohio State in the playoff because they have a bigger fan base and will draw more ratings than Oklahoma mm-hmm. versus conspiracy theory number letter B in this situation. They don't want Ohio State in the playoff because they don't want to have the Urban Meyer conversation for weeks leading up to the championship. Do you buy either? I actually got asked that question earlier if the committee would punish Ohio State for the impropriety that took place before the season. Like, this committee has never once wanted to get into the waters of being a moral arbiter in any way. And that's the thing, right? Do you want to just avoid the entire potential plague that is Urban Meyer by kind of keeping them right on the fringe of this conversation and not having to deal with them? I'm not necessarily bought into it, but like, I could see somebody kind of being on that fence between Oklahoma and Ohio State and say, you know what? I don't really feel like having that discussion. So we're going to go ahead and move them out that out of this playoff conversation in its entirety. It's wild because you guys just gave us conspiracy theories for both fan bases mm-hmm. right. that, that they're going to go yep. with, regardless of what we say. <laughs> or whatever. But, but understand, there are six new committee members also in this. So we can't base the committee's decision on past decisions because half the room is new, yeah. uh, right? So we're learning as they're going how they're passing this eye test. I, I personally believe that it's been well said and discussed, uh, conspiracy number one, that Ohio State will get in because of the fan base and because of the Big Ten Conference. I've seen that. I I think that was made in 2014, right? But Ohio State then showed out on Mm -hmm. the field that they deserve to be in the conversation. I I don't buy either one, just because if you just look at how things have been playing out. Now, if if there was another scenario where Ohio State was was five and Oklahoma was six, then I would start to say, whoa, <laughs> how do you make a jump from 10 to 5, especially a week ago where you almost lose to Maryland on a bad pass by the backup quarterback? The, the reason I have a hard time with conspiracy theories in this situation in general is because the, the people in the room take it so seriously. Totally. And, you know, one thing we have to keep in mind is we don't even, we don't see the votes. 
So we don't know how close any of these are. We don't know how close it was to five to six. What we do know, and what should be pointed out, is that three people had to recuse themselves that we know of yep. from the conversation. Ohio State's athletic director, Oklahoma's athletic director, and one committee member has a son that's on the uh, Oklahoma coaching staff. Mm -hmm. So you have only 10 people made the decision between who is going to be five and who is going to be six. It's hard for me to believe that Ronnie Lott, for example, is in there worried about TV ratings when instead he instead of watching film. Yeah. I mean, that that's the part of it. Like you, you have to believe these guys take the responsibility seriously from what we the people we've talked to. I think they do. And to, to believe that there are conspiracy theories believes that they're not valuing the importance of what they do. And I'm not willing to do that. Just like we're having the conversation here strictly about what has taken place on the field. Obviously, they're going to have the exact same discussion within that room. Nobody is going to openly sort of discuss the thought of trying to slide Ohio State out of the playoff uh, discussion because of what has transpired leading up to the season and throughout the early part of the season. And so, like, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. I'm just saying in an isolated incident, if an individual is really torn between these two teams and they are conflicted morally about Ohio State, I could see them giving the nod to Oklahoma just for the sake of the fact that they didn't want to associate themselves necessarily with that program. I think what's more interesting in all of this is if Ohio State does seriously flirt with this Final Four, <laughs> Because we've all been looking at the situation in Ohio State and saying, Urban, the health conversation mm -hmm. has been coming up again. And we knew before the season, when everything happened, people thought maybe this is the end of it, especially with how the season had gone. If they're flirting with her in the Final Four again, is he still the Ohio State coach next right. year in a way that I don't like? During the middle of the season, I thought it was going to be a natural sort of breaking point for these two parties. And if they get close to the playoff again, I'm not sure how you how, like. I'm how not sure how ways. Yeah, and winning's the best deodorant. It's uh, right? you're listening to Spade and Fitz hashtag rankings reaction. Kevin Nagandi, Trevor Scales, Mike Golick Jr. I'm Jason Fitz. Let's get to another conspiracy theory that ESPN only loves the SEC and wants to put the SEC in whenever possible. That's a that's a common one. Although it should be noted, our network doesn't. Exactly. That, thank SEC you for game. saying that because I was about to scream that out. Like, for anybody to say that ESPN plays a role in these ranks, we do not. We present them and we discuss and we argue, but it's it's the, the playoff committee. They decide what who gets in, not us. Like, not that's what drives me crazy. It, get the, the it drives get me like crazy. Insane. Well, and, and you know, I always go back to the the conversation you hear, and I'm I'm the newest at this this couch to working for ESPN, and one of the the popular conversations is that ESPN people are told what to say and what to do, and nobody's ever come in and said, hey, you can't have this take, you can't talk about like this team, you can't like that. That's just never been a thing. And no matter how loudly you say it, it doesn't stop the conspiracy. It theorists. doesn't matter because it fits a narrative that they that they want. No, it's, it's a lot easier than accepting the truth too. Which 100 is that maybe your team just isn't that good. Can I bring a conspiracy? Theory oh, up? please. Yeah. God, yes. Ooh. I felt that and and thankfully the Irish won out when I say that because I felt that if the Irish would have stumbled in the last two or three weeks, oh, yeah, they were going to be considered still a part of it just because of the following and because of the reputation of Notre Dame. And that was my biggest fear. I was like, do not mess this whole thing up. If they were to lose or stumble, like against Syracuse, I was like, yeah. if they lose, how are we playing this out now? Because right. they don't have a conference championship. Right. Yep. And this is a down year when you look at their schedule. Everybody talks about their schedule. They play a great schedule, but everybody on the schedule was that? down. Yep. Not, not knocking at all, oh, but no. you guys barely beat Ball State and you survive Vandy, right? Oh, yeah. And then at the end, I'm like, well, Florida State's down. The idea that you're traveling USC and they're, they're playing a freshman quarterback and they're trying to get bowl eligible. The concept that we were thinking that USC is trying to be bowl eligible in the final game of the season is so ridiculous. So I, my biggest conspiracy I was putting out there in my own mind was like, how are we going to play this out if they lose to Syracuse and then win out the rest of the games? I thought they would have been punished harshly for that just because we're used to them. Their th strength of schedule-wise, they're 36th in the country yeah. right now, which right. is a lot higher than I thought it was going yeah. to be. But they're usually around top 10. I thought they would have been punished. I thought they would have been knocked out. But I can understand that because perception. We talk about this with a lot of places. I think it's interesting the way we look at teams that have won national championships. Even if no one on that roster has currently done so, we treat Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State differently in 100%. this group. That's why we're so high on Ohio State. Because wait, we've seen Urban do it before. Right. Yes. Like that's there's that's a the different exact, weight class. That's the, exact, the points that you brought up for that 2014 conversation. Yeah. And, and can we also acknowledge that that's part of the other side of the conversation that would be happening for Notre Dame? You mentioned Kevin; they don't have a, a conference championship game. If they needed a win. They would wish they had a conference championship game because they don't need a win. 
It's a glorious thing for them that they don't <laughs> have to play week. one. Help a week, baby. <laughs> Help a week. Which is why Mike is just going to be like, I'm worried about Mike on Saturday. Uh, if you're listening on Twitter, uh, obviously we're going to keep hanging it out. Uh, Mike Golick, Kevin Nagandi, Trevor Scales, thank you guys for joining in on Spain and Fitz, uh, yeah, presenting yeah. the rank, rankings reaction show. If you're hanging out with us on Twitter, we're going to keep going. We're not uh, we're not going anywhere yet. Kevin doesn't get to go home and sleep. There's never any sleep, my friend. Not with three kids. Yeah, There's I mean, no, no sleep. Yeah. Ever, so. Are you, t- you calling the three of us? No. <laughs> I mean, if I, wait, 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 wait. I can drink what? with these three kids. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Freddie and Fitzsimmons is coming up for you next on ESPN Radio. Thanks for hanging out. Keep with us. On Twitter, uh, I, I want to I wanna stay there for just uh, Oh, we get to take the hats it's off? It's so we, hot. We, yeah, the hats. <laughs> like, really, I never, you know what? I never realized what it was like to be leftovers until now. <laughs> no wonder you wrap all your food in this stuff. It really seals in the juices. <laughs> like, I feel gross up here. I'm going to need a shower. Right? Seals in. You're describing juices. <laughs> yeah. Seals in the juices. Um, seals in all the flavor. It's like it, a scuba suit. Is the system broken if UCF can't get in? No. I, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I, I, here's the thing. Now, 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 you know what? You guys can make a huge case. UCF could make a big case if Mackenzie Milton didn't get hurt. And yeah. the idea that we saw this weekend Oklahoma lose, Ohio State lose, Georgia lose, you can make a case legitimately that UCF deserves Absolutely. to be in the top four if Mackenzie Milton is still playing. But it's really yeah. hard to do that when you're talking about the eye test. Again, we go back to the beginning of this conversation. It's a beauty contest. And right now, when you don't have your best player, a yep. dynamic player, the committee, they are human. And the human factor plays the biggest well, role. Well, they're supposed to take that in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're supposed, you're not expecting the UCF Knights to come out and look exactly like they did with McKenzie Milton. It's just a fact of the matter. Yes. So you have to uh, sort of adjust your rankings yeah. accordingly. Well, and you needed every little bit if you were UCF. No like, doubt. You needed him to be healthy and look good in that. Yeah. Because then all of a sudden, if we're talking about some of these stuff, then it might be a little closer if it's them and two loss Georgia coming off that. For sure. If, you know, if you get Ohio State and Oklahoma to lose. But now without him... They're not going to And I tell you what really hurt, real quick, what really hurt UCF is in the final month, Houston collapsing. Yep. And the idea that USF collapsing. Because at the end of the season, you were thinking, all right, we're going to see the big test here in that final month with Cincinnati, Temple, USF, and and, and Houston. I actually thought Houston was the best team in the conference yeah. Yeah. in the beginning yeah. of uh, November. Uh, boy, I was way wrong on <laughs> right, that. Right, right. Right well, the way they, 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 had a, they had a bit of a sideshow going yes, on there for the last few weeks. Right. Take there. your jacket off. <laughs> you're right. Uh, Give me the jacket. So. so, speaking of MVPs, Mike Foss is our MVP. Yeah. We learned last week, Mike, that you are capable of yeah. kicking a 65-yard field goal. Yes. In fact, his family just gets together and they flippantly kick 65-yard field goals. It's we did 65. not believe it and then we were all tagged in video from his family kicking a 65 yard field goal so that what, what led to that? other things that we have been told you can do how do you feel about this list i, I can't you can run see you it. can run a sub six minute mile you're in good shape maybe sure you can grow a long beard I, yeah why, I, yeah why not why not can you grow any hair can I, no this not, is the most not. important thing that we know you can do Give producer Max a large raise. <laughs> not <laughs> after, the, not this after this full screen. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, is it true that you can recite the lyrics to All Star by Smash Mouth? There's only one way to find out. Boom, 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 boom. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. Yeah. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Yeah. Jason. Oh, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> She was looking kind of dumb with her finger. Did not, would not have called that. Would not have called that. I would not have thought you could pull that off. There, huh? I, I, there are so, uh, it's so rare for me to be speechless. And right, <laughs> right now, I am out of amazing <laughs> things to say. I, I, I don't. I don't know, Mike. You, I don't. You, I don't know either. But man. back to I the really, sixty-five yard. Like, is yeah. somebody, yeah. Is somebody yeah. holding the ball? No. Is someone no, holding the tee? Yeah. No, no. They've got the the, the what, little holder that the, the kickers thing. use before yeah. games, like that little yeah. spider thing. Yeah. They now, literally, instead of playing like touch football, the Foss boys go out and kick field goals. Now, now, two of us played Division One college soccer. So, sick so, brag. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> and one of them won. And one of them won a national championship. Mike. Damn it. Yeah. Were you Were you either of those, or were you just like the cheerleader? I, w- I was I was one of them. I didn't win the national championship. Oh, okay. Though. How Go, come, George how come you didn't try out for the 
the football team. I have a weak psyche. Yeah. Oh. Boss is the first one to admit that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, everyone's like, oh, now I feel bad. I'm sorry to bring that up. <laughs> How flippantly you just go to it where you're like, I have a weak psychic. <laughs> like, we cut right through, man. It's so disarming. <laughs> like, seriously. Let's talk about my problems, Like, how weak is your psyche? Could you, could you have not, like, at least gone and tried out for one team? I mean, one week of NFL money. We talked about this after this show. What screwed me up was the helmet. Like, the helmet threw off my balance in the way I could, like, kick like that really was, yeah I, c- I couldn't wear the helmet wow yeah yeah I I there you know what I still love you I, I appreciate say, it I will say a nice thing we talked about all the things Foss can do did anyone else know besides me that Foss is on Forbes 30 under 30 no like no, the Forbes, Forbes are one not, no. not some like bootleg oh, so, like, but, but what, 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 what <laughs> Golik's not telling about the story since then yeah my, my, it's, it's, my, it's been a my, steady decline since. my bestie here Mike was on uh, a, a list of uh, broadcasters under 30 and so he was talking about it one day and he's like hey you know I think somebody else mentioned it Mike wasn't talking about it and somebody's like he made the under 30 list and Foss heard it and just innocently said oh man Forbes under 30? I made that too. And we're all like, <laughs> no, 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 I'm like, mine thing, wasn't right? the Forbes list. <laughs> and then, and oh then like, true, like true, you know, modern society, we're like, sure you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you book it up, you're like, mother of God, <laughs> you made the list. Like, that, that, wow. Yeah. A stunt. Oh, so you, you can go out and look at him. He's right now. I know. I'm now you sit in the kitchen. It was such a good show. It was going so well. Yeah. <laughs> it was just derailed by yeah, hey, guys, nonsense. Guys, we got to say thanks for hanging out. Thanks to Kevin Nagandi. Oh. Thanks for Trevor Scales. Oh, yeah, thanks thanks for, for hanging out. If you're just watching for the first time, uh, Trevor and I host the college football show, which you can find on Twitter from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, obviously on Saturday, you see Kevin everywhere. Like Kevin's a star. <laughs> it's in the uh, 6 o'clock sports center, for God's sake. Turn I mean, it on your TV. I mean, just, yeah, just turn on ESPN anywhere. Like, he's actually in, like, the big commercials. Stop. We just stand on the sidelines trying to, like, you know, find our way into him. Uh, and and uh, you can check us back. We're going to be back here on Sunday for the championship edition of this. We'll get the final uh, version of the rankings. So we'll be back here on Twitter on Sunday to get you caught up on everything that the committee had to say. We appreciate you guys giving us an hour of your time and watching it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Bye. Bye.